We're going to turn now, especially to verse 10 of Philippians 3, verse 10, starting right here. But we need to see it in relationship to 7 to 9, because it begins with that or so that. So this is a this is a purpose or a result of something that's gone before, and we need to know what that is, so that I may know him, know Christ, and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings becoming like him in his death. Father, this is a very strange desire on Paul's part that he would want to know Christ in such a way that he tastes not only the power of his resurrection, but the pain of his sufferings so that he could even be like him in his death. And if this is the way we should live, which it is, I pray that we would know what that means. In Jesus' name, amen. So let me read the previous verses. And as we read it, I'm going to try to answer the question, what does this connect to? This must go back to connect to something. I do something so that I may know him. Now, what, what is it here that is, this is connecting with? Let's just list the acts of Paul. Whatever gain I had, I counted as loss. So verse 7, count loss. For the sake of Christ. For Christ. Indeed, I count everything as loss. So verse 8a, count loss. I count everything as loss for the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus, for worth of knowing Christ. For his sake, let's, let's circle that, I count everything as loss. So there's one, and there's two actions. For his sake, I have suffered the loss. So verse 8b, suffer loss. Of all things, and count them as rubbish. 8c, count rubbish. So, for his sake, I've suffered loss. We'll put for Christ's sake. And I count them as rubbish. So, three, four. In order that I may gain Christ. To gain Christ. And be found, be found. So two results of counting everything as rubbish, those two. In him, and then summing up verse 9, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God. So be found in him for righteousness. So now we're in a position to ask, okay, of all of that and all of that, what does this connect with? Well, they're all basically the same, aren't they? Count as loss, count as loss, suffer loss, count as rubbish. That's that's the only action that's described in verses 7 and 8 and 9. The rest are the goals of counting loss, the results. For Christ's sake, for the worth of knowing Christ, for Christ's sake, 
to gain Christ, to be found in Christ. So I think the answer is fairly easy. This that here connects with these reckonings as loss. And those all refer back to the flesh, remember, of three through six, where Paul lists his pedigree and says, they're not worth anything to me anymore. I used to boast in the flesh, now I glory in Christ Jesus, verse 3. And this is an example of how he's counting all of that flesh as lost, lost, lost rubbish, and how he's doing everything now for the sake of Christ, for knowing Christ, for his sake, to gain Christ. And all of that is so that, he says, he may know him. Now, we're going to come back to this verse 10 again, maybe two more times, at least one more. But let's just see now the structure of the verse. We've seen what it's based on. I count all the works of the flesh, all the pedigree, all the things I used to boast in. I count them as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ. So it's no surprise here that he says, I do all of that that I may know him. This is basically bringing us back to this most powerful statement of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ. I count everything as lost because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ, and I do it that I may know Christ. If, it's of, if it is such worth, of course I want to know him. Now, what's the direct object of know here? Three things. One, him. And two, the power of his resurrection. And three, the sharing of his sufferings. In the ESV, this is a separate clause, that I may share. But here, it's just a noun, koinonia, along with this noun, dunamis, and they're both direct objects along with him of this, so that I may know him, know him in the power of his resurrection, know him in the sharing of his sufferings, know the sharing of his suffering such that I become like him in his death. That's what we want to come back and ask about. We want to ask about each of these. What's, what's meant by each of these? But right here, let's just make sure we see the structure. The aim having shown that by counting everything as loss, I gain the surpassing worth of knowing him. Therefore, I want to know him. Now, what kind of knowing is it? Is it knowing like, I know that honey is sweet because I read in a book that honey is sweet? Or is it knowing that honey is sweet because I just put a spoonful of it in my mouth and wow. And we know that's what this is because he unpacks this knowing as tasting and experiencing by saying, I want to know his power. I want to know the, the, the fellowship and the partnership of his sufferings. I want to become like him. That's the kind of knowing he wants. And that's the kind of knowing we ought to want. Not just about Christ that you can learn from books, but to know Christ by standing with Christ in his power, by sharing in his sufferings, by becoming like him in his death, which we'll come back to and ask about next time. But one more observation before we stop. Isn't it interesting that he puts power first and then lest we misunderstand what it would be like in this life to share the power of his resurrection, he says, to share his sufferings. Wouldn't you think that it might be a power to avoid these sufferings? Wow, if I have resurrection power, if I have in me the very power that enabled Jesus to rise from the dead, then I can jump over sufferings. No, you can't. Not if you're going to become like him in his death. This is power to suffer, power to suffer, power to suffer. You see that? That's the mark of a true Christian. 
That's the mark of a true apostle. Paul didn't want to take a different route to heaven than Jesus did. He wanted power. Oh, yes, there's no living of the Christian life without divine power. Indeed, the kind of power that raises people from the dead. But it takes that kind of power to share sufferings and become like him in his death. So what does that mean? We turn there next time.